Great. Thanks, Dan. We have a question online before we uh, have you jump off and we're on a time constraint. But Chuck Kaufman was interested to learn a little bit more about B'nai B'rith's efforts in Geneva and uh, what specifically we've done recently and if there's anything that we're looking at doing in uh, Geneva and on the European front. I'm sorry, Chuck. If you repeat it again, I got the last part of it. Uh, just if you could elaborate on our efforts in Geneva uh, with the United Nations Human Rights Council uh, and uh, some of our history working in uh, Geneva as well. Well, basically uh, in, in Geneva uh, <clears throat> there is uh, this uh, basket of issues. There are five or six resolutions we consider to be anti-Israel related to human rights abuses, they relate to settlements, they relate to Jerusalem. They're all in kind of a basket, and they're grouped together in something called Item 7. And uh, every year, uh, dutifully, um, <clears throat> the members of the Human Rights Council adopt <clears throat> this resolution, they have this basket of issues. Um, Israel is not a member of the Human Rights Council because there are only about 54 members of the council, but every country has representation in Geneva. <clears throat> so when you go to Geneva, and you go to where the council <clears throat> meets, it's equivalent uh, of actually going to New York uh, because you have all the same countries that are represented there. Uh, so what we try to do is we try to advocate for Israel, and we say the following. We say that every time that the Human Rights Council adopts this basket of resolution, it does two things. It raises the expectations of the Palestinians to unmeetable levels, and it says to the Israelis that they can't get a fair break at the United Nations. So if the UN is interested in advancing peace between the Israelis and Palestinians, they wouldn't continue to do year in and year out what they do, which is basically to pick up the cudgel for the Palestinians uh, against Israel. That's not uh, an objective approach uh, to the peace process. And in fact, we think it's a destructive approach to the peace process. So that's basically what we do there. Uh, now, Throughout the rest of the year, uh, we also have an office in Brussels, and that office in Brussels is dedicated to working in the European Union. The European Union has 27 member countries. Its capital, if you will, is in uh, Brussels, and uh, there is the European Parliament there and the other institutions of the EU. We have a full-time office. Some of you know our director in Brussels, uh, Nuno Wadon, who's uh, really a terrific uh, representative for us, um, and uh, we work uh, with um, and we uh, advocate for Israel uh, inside the European Union, which is so important for a lot of reasons, uh, on these same issues uh, on a daily basis because uh, we have an office there. The Human Rights Council meets three times a year, and they have three six-week sessions, I believe it's six-week sessions. But we only go over for uh, that period uh, where these anti-Israel resolutions are taken up. During the rest of the year, we have a volunteer committee in Geneva. These are, these are folks who live in Geneva. Some of them have worked in the UN system. They're members of our lodge in Geneva. And uh, they are terrific, and they work uh, year-round uh, on these issues. Uh, we only bring the delegation, and we'll have an international delegation that will be going over between March 10th and March 15th uh, for these meetings. And explicitly, um, Chuck was curious, do we meet with the Palestinians while we're there, or do we have other individuals that work within our coalition speak directly with them? No, we've not met with the Palestinians. Um, we've not met with the Palestinians. Uh, and I think uh, the reason is, is, is a simple one and a very pragmatic one. Um, if we believe that until international multilateral organizations, especially the UN, or especially the European Union, uh, cease um, this automatic knee-jerk support for the Palestinian side, <clears throat> that we're not going to get the attention of the Palestinians. Um, we favor a, a, a two-state solution. Uh, we certainly want to see peace come to Israel. Uh, that's uh, our most fervent hope. Uh, but it's not going to happen uh, if the Palestinians think that, that they uh, will always have the support of the international community. 
And that's why we focus in on, on that. Uh, it's not that uh, we, are, we are averse uh, to sitting down uh, with, let's say, with a Palestinian delegation, but we feel that now, uh, well, uh, hopefully our argumentation, hopefully our persuasiveness, will convince uh, the, the Europeans in particular and the others uh, to look at this differently. There should be, they should be sending a message to the Palestinians that uh, Europe, for example, has, has carried the water for the Palestinians for three, four decades, uh, especially since 1981, when the European Union, then called the European uh, Community, the EC, endorsed something called the Venice Declaration. It really kind of backed the Palestinians. And the Europeans kind of see, even though they have individually, they have good bilateral relations with Israel, uh, as a group, they kind of see their status as being the friend in court of the Palestinians, and the U.S. is a friend in court of the Israelis. Now, we believe it's time for these countries to tell the Palestinians, we've carried your water for a long time. The best way to reach a solution is to sit at the table with the Israelis. Sit at the table. And there's a whole range of, of, of uh, resolution uh, and issues, rather, that need to be discussed. Uh, but that's, it can only be done that way. It can't be done unilaterally, and it can't be done from the outside, because that way there never is going to be the peace that we want for that region. So that's why we do what we do. Great. Thank you, Dan. I know um, you have to head out. We appreciate you joining us this Sunday yeah, morning. Thank you. Thank you again, everybody, and I uh, hope to see or talk to all of you soon. Thank you very much, Dan.